Hi, Junior with today's thought, and today's thought is going to be a poll I want to share with you, which actually surprised me a little bit. This is a poll from Gallup, and it's a poll that not only surprised me, but is causing me to wonder about the other polls we've been seeing, the polls on the presidential race, uh, Trump versus Harris. Most of the polls are showing Harris ahead, sometimes comfortably ahead, but there are other polls that are showing a tie or Trump ahead by a little bit. And it helps to look back to 2016 against uh, uh, Trump against Hillary because all the polls, I, I went back and looked, the night before the election, all the polls showed um, showed Clinton ahead, except for one. There was only one poll from, I, I believe it was the, the Los Angeles Times. That showed Trump ahead by a little bit, and that uh, obviously turned out to be the correct poll, and the other ones were wrong. Trump has had a, now we can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but he, in the future, but he has had a, a track record of outperforming his the, the polls, which, uh, if, well, we'll see how this election turns out, but if if Trump wins and all these polls show him, there are so many sh polls showing him losing, then uh, we have to wonder how they're taking these polls or what's wrong. There has to be a flaw somewhere, either that or deliberate bias in some of these polls. So we'll have to see. But the poll I want to share with you, which, which is the poll that is uh, causing me to question these other polls or to wonder about them, is, as I said from Gallup, here it is. The poll you're looking at, as you can tell by the title, it's a poll on party identification. Now, I'm just going to read you a couple of sentences from the, the web page on which uh, uh, the, this um, chart that you're looking at is. So, party affiliation and voting are strongly predictive of individuals' vote choices, with the vast majority of identifiers and leaners voting for the candidate of their preferred party. Democrats have won presidential elections in years in which they had larger than normal advantages in party affiliation, including 1992, 1996, 2008, 2012, and 2020. And now you're looking at the chart and well, you can see from the chart, it has when the, the Democrats won and when the Republicans won. And you can see that there are times when the Republicans won, when you had either the uh, Democrats ahead in party affiliation, or uh, party identification, or uh, pretty evenly matched. So now you go all the way to the right, and what do you see? This is what surprised me. Republicans, uh, this is from the fir for the first time since I think you have to go all the way back to 1991, if I, if I am correct. And Republicans outnumber Democrats now. More voters identify as Republicans than as Democrats. And as you see in that chart, the Republicans have won in years. Well, as uh, the quote I quoted you from Gallup, that the Democrats win when they have a wide margin, a, a wide, uh, a very wide, uh, or wider than normal uh, uh, party uh, affiliation, party identification than the Republicans do. And, but there are other times when the Democrats are still ahead or evenly matched and the Republican won. So what we have here though, as you see in that chart, is that the Republicans are ahead, which is why I'm wondering about all these polls that are showing Kamala Harris ahead. Because how do you, I guess you have, as well, you can look at any poll, any poll, I don't care what poll it is or who it shows ahead, but you look at, if you go into the party identification, if you go into the figures behind the polls, then you, you see that, well, you'll see, uh, 80, 85%, 90% of the Democrats voting for the Democrat, 85, 90% or, or more Republicans voting for the Republican candidate. That's how it usually works. So if Harris is winning, that means that a lot of Republicans are switching, are going to vote for Harris. But the, I guess you call it the anecdotal evidence. For instance, you have the unions, you have the unions 
with, uh, that uh, union members, they traditionally vote for the, the Democrat, but you have the Teamsters, for instance, they took a poll, and they most, and I think the auto workers too, the, the rank and file members, the, but definitely the Teamsters, they are overwhelmingly voting for Trump. So that's why you had, well, the UAW, they still, they, they endorsed Kamala Harris, the Teamsters did not make any, they kind of co copped out or they punted. They did not endorse anybody, which is still a, a, a blow to Democrats. But you have this anecdotal evidence. You have, um, you have these tech uh, billionaires, high-tech billionaires, Silicon Valley uh, billionaires who typically vote for the Democrat. And you, you had a, a two or three of them openly support uh, Donald Trump and um, I just saw the other day there was a, an actor I forgot his name because I don't really follow the movie so I guess there's a movie or, or TV show Shazam I guess, I guess it's supposed to be uh, some kind of hero or something he's a very popular actor whoever it is and I honestly don't remember the name but he came out and he endorsed uh, Donald Trump and you're seeing well you're seeing these crossovers uh, and Elon Musk obviously you see these crossovers, people crossing over, and I don't see so much, I'm not going to say there aren't any, but I don't see so many Republicans crossing over and saying, well, uh, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Uh, I just don't see it as much. Uh, I see it heavily weighted the other way. Oh, and then you have uh, Hispanics. Uh, Trump is doing better than anybody among Hispanics, definitely better than he traditionally does, the same thing with black voters. It's, uh, you have all these things weighted on one side of the ledger, ledger and plus this Gallup poll, most uh, voters uh, identify as Republicans, yet you have all these polls showing Kamala Harris ahead. So, uh, as I said, I don't know why, that's why I, start, I don't uh, land on this. I was occasionally doing poll updates and uh, the Real Clear Politics average of polls. And I, I, st I haven't done one in a while because these polls are so all over the, play, the place and because the polls, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of them. I really don't. And um, that's why I don't, unless I get, unless suddenly, if the polls suddenly switch to show Trump uh, ahead in every poll, then maybe I, I would do that because I would show the poll because that, the polls because that would be, would be such a dramatic change. But even then, I I I don't know if I would because you just can't. Um, I I don't know. I guess the pollsters should get together after this election if Trump wins and they really got to uh, they really have to uh, discuss their methodology because they're getting something wrong and well. I'll throw, as I've mentioned in the past, people say get to the point, but I always have another thought. And the, the thought I have is that uh, I wonder if all these um, calling Republicans deplorables and all this negative news about Republicans, I just saw um, um, an evaluation today from somebody called the Media Research Center. What they do is they just track news stories and they, the, oh, because of the, the debate tonight, I'm recording this the day before you're seeing it. So, uh, by now you would have seen the debate if you watched it, the debate between, um, Walls and, and Vance. But, um, 80, yeah, it was exactly matched. 89% of the coverage, the news reports on CBS, they're the ones who are sponsoring the poll. 89% of the, um, of the coverage of Vance has been negative. 89%, same percentage of the coverage of Walls has been, the Democrat has been positive. And this is who's hosting the poll. Now, the one positive thing is that the, um, there's not going to be any fact checking by the moderators. It's going to, which is the way it should be because you're testing not just their composure and ability to think on their feet, but these candidates, the, the purpose of the debate is who knows their facts, who can come in and correct somebody. If somebody says something that's wrong in the other candidate, they're supposed to know. They're supposed to know the answers. They shouldn't need a fact checker. They're supposed to know the facts. And if they don't come in correct, it, it shows that 
Um, if, if Well, you have a double whammy, I guess, if uh, one candidate uh, states a, an incorrect fact, so that's a strike on that candidate. But if the other candidate doesn't correct the candidate who made the who, who misstated a fact, well, that's a it's a strike against that candidate. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the idea, I guess, is that this is going to remove the bias if they don't fact uh, check. But the other. Um, um, uh, criterion would be what kind of questions they ask. If uh, if uh, Wallace, a Democrat, gets softball questions, and Vance, the Republican, gets hardball questions, well, that's going to tell you something. If you get Vance getting questions about Springfield, Ohio, and and, and Haitians uh, accused of eating dogs and cats or whatever, eating pets. Uh, that that's just a that's just that's an attack on Vance. That's not useful information that you need to have for deciding who you're going to uh, for whom you're going to vote. So we'll just see. That's my thought for today. Thanks for stopping by. If you could subscribe, that would really be great. Comments always welcome in the comments section below the video. Share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it. But most of all, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.